with Kid and all this. And so I thought Danny Aiello did pretty good with what he had to work with. And then you got villains like uh, the, the villain played by Roy Chow, and he's Harold Coe, you know, so. And they had a, and Glickian Haas actually redubbed his voice for the character because he didn't think the line sounded good enough in uh, Roy Chow's voice. So he had them dubbed over with another actor. And uh, Roy Chow does fine. He has a slight amount of menace. But nothing overtly so. It, it's just suitable for the character. And nothing more can really be gleaned from it. And um, then you have the main fighting villain. Which is Bill Superfoot Wallace. He really doesn't get much run time in the flick. And... Um, him and Jackie match their fighting skills against each other, and it results in a decent bout. Not great, but decent. And there's some really good moves, especially near the beginning of the fight. And then, of course, there's a after Jackie temporarily subdues his attacker, Bill Wallace, he... Climbs up the stairs and goes to fight some of the other goons. And that action is pretty good. But again, it could have been better. So, um, let's see, you got Bill Wallace. Then you got Moon Lee, who plays a supporting part. And Moon Lee, to me, was not very convincing or interesting at all in the character she was playing. And uh, so I thought her character was pretty throwaway. Um, let's see. Then you got the girl that played uh, Lara, Lara Shapiro. I can't remember what her real name is. I didn't, I didn't think she did that good in her role, but it worked. That's about all you could say. Um, and then some other highlights of the movie is the cinematography by Mark Irwin, which is excellent, excellent, excellent. Mark Irwin's cinematography really adds something to the picture. So, that's good. Ken Thorne, when I first saw The Protector, his musical score kind of got on my nerves and it seemed very generic. But, um, the opening little few notes at the beginning of the movie where saying Golden Harvest presents and all that stuff, James Glickenhaus film, that was good. And also, the main theme, like during the boat chase and everything really gets caught in your mind after a while and you really start to like the song and it sticks in your mind and you sometimes find yourself whist find myself whistling it without thinking about it so i guess the music score was okay it's a decent score but again it could have had more dramatic depth which everything in them every element of the movie could have really had more dramatic depth except for the, of course the cinematography which was perfectly gritty and perfectly evoking what they was trying to accomplish and let's see so just a, a brief uh, rundown on James Glickenhaus he also directed movies such as The Exterminator, The Soldier, The Astrologer, um, Slaughter of the Innocents um, pictures like that um, and see, he was he was approached by um, some of the executives for Golden Harvest about doing the movie, and he would agree to do it only if he had complete control. Which, of course, if you have total complete control on your project, it's either going to be a great project or it's going to be not as good as it could have been because no one else has input. At which is uh, what happened to the protector and since no one else really had much input into the film it's just a one-man vision where the vision is kind of murky so uh, take that as you will and let's see what else I want to point out Jackie doesn't really act different than he would in a normal movie people act like Jackie acts very different in this film it's just a couple of times what how Glicken what Glickenhaus has Jackie say kind of comes off as being kind of jerky. And um, Jackie also cusses a few times in the movie, which is uncharacteristic of Jackie. Otherwise, he's pretty much the same as he is in any other movie. 
It's just less entertaining than usual. But again, I like a lot of things about the movie. In particular, that boat chase. That is one good boat chase. And the bar shootout was good too. I think the movie doesn't really lose any steam at all. I mean, it's pretty much a very nice picture until they get to Hong Kong. Actually, when they get to... See, you think Jackie being in America in a early American movie and them home going to Hong Kong would build the momentum for their style of filmmaking. But actually, it slows things down. It becomes less intriguing. And there's more problems once they get to Hong Kong. Because before they get to Hong Kong, that's pretty much a flawless action picture. But um, once they get to Hong Kong, the, there's slow motion in the stunts. There's uninteresting action. There's, un, there's gratuitously long shots of just scenery that seem to go on forever and add nothing to the movie. And... Um, then, of course, you have the gratuitous nudity, which shouldn't have been there. It makes it feel more like a beef flick and uh, all that. But the movie definitely has its pros and cons, but there's def definite pros, like I said. And uh, I would definitely recommend this to any Chan fan or fan of gritty action flicks. Just be advised, be realize that this action flick isn't as gritty as a lot can be but it's by far one of Jackie's grittier films but don't let you think that that means this is a huge departure for Jackie himself it just seems to be Jackie who is, is slightly more prone to causing violence and cusses now Instead of not doing that. I mean, that's the only thing that really sets Jackie, makes Jackie different. Otherwise, he's the same character he always plays. So, yes, I would recommend this film. I say out of a whopping five stars, I would give it a three. There's enough things to recommend it, but there's enough detractors to stop it from being anywhere near perfect so there you have it it's a movie i suggest you check out and until next time this has been a splarshy extended review